All right, cool. Thank you. <coughs> so we'll get started. Uh, I apologize for my voice. Uh, my sinus has decided to uh, give me a hard time, but um, <coughs> bear with me. Uh, so this is, uh, we're going to talk about web VR. What is VR and web VR? Why might one do it and how you can do it? So uh, about me real quick. <coughs> I'm a senior front-end developer at Lullabot. Uh, I have a BFA in illustration, Bachelor of Fine Art. Um, I've worked in web uh, UX as a designer for seven years. I've only been a uh, developer by title uh, recently. Um, if I slander certain tools, these are the ones I own. Uh, so if I slander the other ones, then maybe you can take that bias for what it's worth. But Google Cardboard, which is one of these guys, I have my daydream with me. And my Vive is way too expensive and big to drag around. Anyway, <coughs> so I work for Lullabot, like I said. Uh, we do strategy, strategy design and development. We're awesome. We have a couple of bots here in town, and uh, a lot of us are from the U.S., uh, also some in Spain. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in working with us, uh, let me know. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to go over today, uh, first we're going to talk about what is VR, what does the landscape look like, um, what can you use it for, what's the hardware and software like, um, and, and how does that inform the user experience. And we're going to talk about WebVR specifically, and, uh, and we're not going to do it on Code 10, unfortunately, because that requires a uh, reliable internet connection, which I don't want to try and risk. Uh, so we're just going to build it, um, but you can't. You can't build this on Code 10. We're going to build something on my computer here. So <coughs> first, let's get some ten uh, terminology straight. Um, so this is Milgram's Reality to Virtuality Continuum. I don't know who that is, but I thought this was a very good way to explain it. So, on one side you have a real environment, like we are now, in theory. Uh, and then on the other side you have a virtual environment, which is you can't see anything real, everything is computer generated. And then you have these two spots in the middle. So augmented reality, and then augmented virtuality. <coughs> I hope I don't have to explain real environment too much. I'm just going to go right to virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality, like I said, is you're completely immersed. So this is a green screen, so you can kind of see what she's seeing, but in reality, none of, none of this is real, uh, just the girl. So she's petting a robot dog with her hands, which are controllers in this instance. <coughs> this is the same uh, system of vibe, and so this guy's defending his castle with his bow and arrow. But you can in fact see that uh, one of the bow in the left hand is actually a controller, um, but it looks and feels very convincing, other than you're in a cartoon universe. Um, <laughs> augmented reality. So augmented reality, uh, a good popular example of this is uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, so it's taking a photo of what's actually in front of you and then putting something virtual inside of that. <coughs> uh, and then one of my favorites, uh, more useful implementations of augmented reality today, uh, and some other car companies have made it so you can point your camera at your car and then it'll have things that you can do like change the oil and it'll actually you click on change the oil and it'll play a little video right over where the part is that you'll need to interact with. It's really cool. Um, and this actually isn't all that tricky. This isn't like space age stuff. Um, this is not quite out yet. I think this is just a marketing shot, but just as an idea for where augmented reality could go. This is a marketing shot for Microsoft HoloLens. So they use a, a, a visor that you can kind of see through and then you can bring up screens wherever you want and you can interact with them with pinching. You don't need controllers. <coughs> this is something they actually have done. Uh, it's still a bit of a marketing shot. It's not quite this amazing, but it is quite amazing. Um, so he's actually looking at uh, human anatomy in different phases that are in the, in the actual room with him. He'll walk around and inspect and maybe touch, turn, all that kind of fun stuff, uh, which is really helpful to try and understand how our bodies actually come together. So uh, augmented virtuality. It's not a great example of this right now, but let's say, uh, <coughs> and, and this little shot. This is just virtual reality, and this guy has an actual console in front of him, right? Augmented virtual reality could be introduced here by making the uh, hands, steering wheel, and uh, all that dashboard stuff actually appear in-game. So he's not looking at a virtual version of the hands. He's looking at his hands and that steering wheel. And maybe that steering wheel has custom controls on it, um, that the game doesn't have to worry about where they are or map them into something in the virtual world. So. <coughs> What are the kind of experiences and interaction types you have? You don't, you don't use a keyboard and mouse usually, uh, our usual way of interacting with computer. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, so the most common one is a gaze or a look and a press. So a gaze is if I wanted to interact with that first row, I would look at it 
and then maybe a, a bar would fill up or something would happen to let me know that I have to look at it this long and then we'll assume that I wanted to interact with that. Uh, these in the press is I look at it and then I click. So on the cardboard, there's a little button up here. Um, that you might have a controller or something that might also let you click at whatever you're looking at. <coughs> and then, uh, so there's also traditional controllers. Uh, you have your media controllers are pretty popular, just little guys, little you know, buttons on them. Uh, your video game controllers for video game people, uh, or a specialized controller, be it driving your steering wheel, uh, uh, flight stick, whatever. <coughs> Uh, you also have VR controllers. What I mean by VR controllers is that these uh, occupy space in the virtual world. So you see that guy with a bow and arrow. He's holding up his left hand and that turns into a bow because that's where that controller is. So if I go like this, the bow goes like this. Right? So these things actually appear in the real world. Uh, we're coming to a point where uh, they're going to start looking more like the Oculus one there. Vive is going to come out with a similar one <coughs> where that's basically trying to get as close to a hand as possible. So I believe, I'm not positive, so I heard that the ring is there so you can reach out and let go of the controller and the ring will catch on the back of your hand. And there's touch sensor right there that would let it know that your hand is open. And then when you close it again, you're back on that joystick thing and it knows that you've actually grabbed something. So that kind of the idea there. There's also, oh, yeah, quick demo of that. Uh, control tab, yes. Okay, so here's, here's the um, Oculus Touch controllers. So my new actions here, she's pressing buttons and pulling triggers and able to throw things and grab things and you know, really uh, 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 finely tuned kind of interaction stuff that you, know, you, can't, you can't have bad lag on this. It has to actually map uh, very realistically. Oh yeah, this is a good one. So like being able to you know, know where your slingshot is and your, your rubber banded thing. Shot, I guess. <laughs> Uh, right, back to that. <coughs> There's also the, uh, uh, oh, now I'm forgetting the name of it, Leap Motion. Uh, it came out for computers, uh, the idea was you could set it underneath your keyboard and then you could do gestures at your computer. Didn't hit it very well. Now they've hung it on the front of the head mounted display, the VR thing, and you don't have to wear any controllers. You can see where your hands are and actually can distinguish your fingers. So this isn't like, you know, it's not wearing a glove. It's showing, this is a demo showing that I can actually see where all your hands are, or where your fingers are, and you're able to do these minority report BS and like throw a cube. Cool. That's very awesome. <clears throat> so uh, another thing that comes into play a lot is body interaction. So <clears throat> the vast majority of VR experiences right now <clears throat> are either sitting or standing. Excuse me. Sitting or standing means that if I am wearing this and I am in a virtual world, if I do this, the world does not move. The world has no idea where I am in space. If I sit down, it does not lower the viewpoint. So basically, you're either sitting or you're standing, and you're doing this. So that's, that's kind of sitting or standing. That's the easiest way to get a virtual thing because we have gyroscopes on our phones and it's easy to kind of detect someone going like this. But knowing how far they move when the gyroscope lilts forward is a lot trickier and you're risking motion sickness. Um, room scale is something where you can actually tra uh, track a person in space. So this is a, a marketing shot for the Vive. And basically they have two beacons up there that are shooting out a laser grid. And then all the sensors are on the controller and the headset. <coughs> And it can tell exactly where you are, a very fine detail, uh, many times a second. Um, so it feels very, very convincing. So those are the kinds of things you can do with uh, the interaction. Uh, what's the hardware look like? So uh, for, I kind of separate this into high end and low end. Uh, I would call anything low end uh, something that's under $100 ish. So um, American, I'll, I'm going to speak in American dollars because they're the ones I know. Um, <laughs> So you have the Google Cardboard, which I have here. Um, it's not made by Google, they made a specification. Uh, all developers can develop to it, and all people who make hardware can develop to it, and then all their things can work together. Uh, they're about $20, and then the Google Daydream here. You have to have a special phone. Um, it's like one of many Android phones, I think there's 10 or something. Um, and then you can use the Google Daydream. Uh, Google Daydream does have a VR controller. It's similar to a Wii controller. It has a pretty good idea of what you're doing because of gyroscopes, but it's not like tracked insanely well or anything like a, a Vive controller or anything. So um, if someone standing over here raises the controller, it shows it like I'm raising it right here, but it doesn't really know. 
but it does feel very intuitive. It works very, very well. Um, Samsung Gear VR, uh, they're the first uh, uh, solid uh, uh, VR thing that came to market. It has to have one of a few uh, Samsung phones. It's probably grown by now. Uh, when at launch, their controller was on the side there, so you have a click. Is the center thing, you tap that, or you can go forward, backward, uh, down, up. Kind of like the Fresno Xavier, you're into that. Like, okay. And then on the top, <coughs> back button and a volume rocker. Um, and then they also have that controller now too right here. I have not seen it. But I put a green check mark there for the mouse. Sorry. Uh, so just to give you an idea, Google Cardboard, about $20 uh, or less. Um, if you're paying any more, you're, you're a silly person. Um, Google Daydream, uh, so it's $49 right now in the States. I think it's actually like 80 pounds here for some reason. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> um, but you also have that special phone, Google Cardboard. Well, we're not practically any phone. Um, Gear VR also needs special phone um, and a little bit of a higher price point. This is usually uh, $80 in America, but um, yeah. when I checked last, that was it. So none of these do room scale because that would require a lot of external tracking devices. So, higher end headsets. <coughs> so, Oculus Rift uh, is uh, the first major VR headset that came to market. Uh, it's also kind of uh, reignited this craze. We've, we've had VR multiple times. Um, oh, so I can explain what these are. So you have a media controller that comes with it. That's the tracking tower, so it tracks kind of like a Wii where it has an IR camera and then it shoots out IR lights so they can kind of know where you are. Um, so then the headset and a came with a controller. And now, uh, as of yesterday or two days ago, these actually come with it. You used to have to buy them separate and uh, price point lowered, which is very cool. The Vive, this is the, the stuff they have right now. They'll have new controllers soon, but they allow you have the two uh, things that help track room scale uh, and then the headset and the controllers. So uh, big price leap here. So I put the Gear VR because I had I had units sold on the bottom. Thought we'd compare. So uh, Oculus Rift is six hundred dollars, um, but it sold three point six mil, um, and this is in twenty sixteen. Uh, and I'm assuming my source is good. Might not be. Uh, <clears throat> and then eight hundred dollars for the Vive, and it has two point one million units sold. Um, and oh, uh, I put a star in there because it can technically do room scale, but uh, I don't expect that they expect to have many people setting up room scale. They don't do it by default. It's a custom that it's by no sensor and yeah. that not many people are going to do it right um, So yeah, just kind of see uh, what that what those numbers are like. It's pretty near impossible to figure out how many cardboards are out there. I've heard many eight year olds tear these apart, so if you have eight year olds, don't do that. Uh, <coughs> they think they're superhero goggles. Kids. Um, <coughs> so what can you do with VR? So entertainment, obviously, uh, gaming, photos, video. Uh, when, you, when I say photos and video, you can do 360 photos and video. Uh, for 360 video, you need a special machine. But for 360 photos, if you have the capability of making a photosphere on your phone or anything similar, uh, that can actually show up in VR. And it is very freaking cool, um, a lot more than you would think initially, I think. Um, and I have some I could show uh, after if anyone's interested. Um, so education, uh, being, being immersed in an environment is a uh, has much higher chance of empathy uh, or, or becoming involved with whatever you're seeing. Uh, when it's all around you, you can choose what you want to look at. Um, and so that, that's really good for documentaries and journalism. Uh, New York Times has done a lot of 360 video content, uh, I think, to great effect. Um, and uh, they've done some stuff in, in very poor areas or, or areas in need, and then also like helicopter ride to see a large piece of art that was on New York City uh, in Times Square. Um, you can also demonstrate macro, micro and macro scale. So uh, micro meaning, uh, I don't know if you get uh, the magic school bus here, but when they shrunk down into the body and like rode around with red blood cells, micro, right? Uh, you could do that and you could also uh, do macro scale. So you could fly around the spaceship and look at Saturn and you know, uh, demonstrate uh, things that are, are way bigger than you. <coughs> Um, you can also do uh, places that are hard to get at, so museums, just in locations. Um, there, are, there are people that are 3D scanning very cool places so that you get the actual, you can actually walk around in a 3D representation that has the, has the right depth and the right texture. 
It's very cool. And also an event reenactment, things that you know happened a long time ago that you can't just go visit. <coughs> so for help names, you have uh, three stands that we do now can be imported into VR, and a doctor could see how our body's laid out because it's often very different um, because we are all weird and squishy in there. And <coughs> you can also do uh, exposure therapy for <coughs> phobias or PTSD, so if you're afraid of heights, you can be put on the top of a skyscraper, but of course, you're on the ground. There's nothing that's gonna happen. Uh, or spiders. Uh, those are a couple of popular ones that are just hanging out for free. Um, I, I'm sure there's more. Uh, but mental rehabilitation for stroke and brain injuries, uh, uh, there's been some work on that, and they're finding that they're better able to target uh, the specific areas of the brain they need to rehabilitate if they can control the stimulus more. So very cool stuff. Um, then there's training simulations. So uh, I could get, I could teach you how to drive a car without having to put you uh, in a giant chunk of metal that moves at high speeds. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, same thing with flight. Um, specialized controls for large vehicles and factories. So if I have a friend, his wife does uh, human factors and nuclear engineering, so they actually have to buy consoles that Homer Simpson might use so that people can figure out what they do in crisis. If they didn't have to buy those big things, they could just do it for the yard, it'd be a lot easier. Uh, battlefield military stuff, they're already doing that. NASA, I'm sure, is doing something. They've already done crazy expensive things to train their people. So, <clears throat> that's just kind of VR in general. Let's talk about VR. So, Mo's VR is an effort from Mozilla. Um, there's a whole team behind this, and they have different efforts. So their goal is to bring VR to the web natively. So, uh, uh, the W3C would have a specification that browsers would implement so that we could talk to hardware and know what hardware is available and what interaction types are available. So uh, they're also dedicated to making sure that we can use this today, that we don't have to wait until the W3C decides to agree on something, as you guys know, can take a very long time. <coughs> uh, so there's the WebVR boilerplate. This is a little more developer-oriented, you know, it's a, it has a packages and it has like a lot of crazy JavaScript things and all this cool stuff. Um, it, it is really good for custom experiences if you really want to get into the nitty gritty. Um, <clears throat> and it works in uh, modern browsers, whether or not you have VR, it still works as a 3D thing. Um, under, the, under the hood, um, these experiences are using uh, the full screen API, which exists, Netflix, YouTube, all those people use it, right? Uh, also, WebGL, which is there on forever, but uh, hasn't seen a ton of use. Um, So they're not like doing something awful to try and get these uh, VR images across. A-Frame. A-Frame is built on top of the VR boilerplate, but it's an easy to learn markup language. So designers, people who aren't as technical, can get in the game and uh, experiment with lighting, uh, different scales, and you know, mess around, move things around. Uh, you can import uh, custom 3D models, all that fun stuff. Uh, it could be further modified with JavaScript. Since it's built on WebVR boilerplate, you don't, like if you hand it to a dev who has to make something more custom, they don't have to completely disassemble it. They could just continue working with it. Um, so it's not like this completely separate thing uh, where it's like, oh, you handed me uh, front page HTML. I'm just going to throw that out. Uh, you could actually uh, keep this. <coughs> um, and then the project goal here is to enable more creators. So if you only have engineers with an engineering past that are kind of uh, working on this stuff, uh, they're going to think a certain way generally, and, and so the idea is to try and get more people involved so that they can try out more things and do uh, lots of weird, interesting stuff. So, how are we doing on time? All right, doing great. Any questions so far? Yeah. Just wondering uh, why you didn't do information about PSVR. Ah, if they have a good web browser, I will start hearing about that. Do you have any hopes? I mean, they didn't have any kind of VR video support until the web. Not only my brand. They haven't been good at open source, and if anything, they've been a little hostile when they decided you couldn't install your own OS. But it is a really good, if you're just interested in VR gaming stuff, it is a very competent, solid headset. Um, definitely worth looking into. Any other questions? Feel free to stop me, slow me down. I used to teach a lot, I'm used to it. Um, all right, so good news about A-Frame. Uh, docs are fantastic. They're not, you know, uh, I, I've had a couple stumbling blocks, but they were very good. Um, it's a single JS file. Uh, this is just like including jQuery. This is not like compiling to React, uh, whatever. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, so very, very straightforward to go through. That's why you can do it on CodePen. You just you know, include the, their JavaScript as, a, as an external library and start typing. So <coughs> to get started, this is all you need. Uh, linking to A-Frame uh, over the web, or you can download it, link to it from there. Uh, if you want to downside right now, A-Frame is one day. Mm -hmm. A little bit. It does awesome stuff. So. Uh, then you need a theme. So every HTML tag that um, A-Frame uses all starts with A dash. Um, so if you see one of those, pretty good idea what's going on. Uh, generally, <coughs> A-Frame takes up the entire screen. It doesn't have to. Um, but uh, yeah, usually there's nothing else in the HTML really, uh, except for maybe if you want to tell somebody you can't see that this page is VR crazy or you know, uh, try to provide some alternate content uh, for whatever you're doing. I haven't gotten that far, I've just messed with content. <laughs> uh, so, adding a background. Uh, so, uh, in, in uh, VR and 3D stuff, there's something called a sky image. Sky image is just an image that's very far away. An A frame by default is 2,000 meters, which by the way, you're all very lucky. You're used to meters. I have no idea what a meter is. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's when someone calms down after being pissed. Um, so yeah, you can do a sky image. Uh, you can either do a flat color, so hex stuff. You know, you've seen that. Or you can actually pull in an image, um, and it's basically going to be wrapped around a sphere that is 2,000 meters away, unless you say otherwise. Um, and so it gets a little weird. That, uh, am I allowed to draw in there? Well, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> The, the image is about yay dimensions, and uh, at the very top and bottom, it's all going to be wrapped around one pixel. So things get more distorted the closer they get to the top and bottom edge. But I can show you that in a little bit. Oh, I also made these uh, slides so that you could follow along without me talking. So there, you'll notice there are links at the bottom, so you don't have to take too many notes. Um, you can just get the slides. Uh, I'll tweet them out afterwards. <coughs> and they'll change every time I do this talk, so... Uh, yeah. Hopefully get better on it. Uh, so let's add a sphere. Let's add something to our stage, our, our scene. Um, so this is the way that I usually do it. This is the uh, way that makes most sense to me. So I declare a sphere with the tag, and it has attributes, like HTML attributes that can have. So color orange has a radius instead of a width and height, which looks you would have. Um, and then um, uh, this one right here, if you uh, follow people that do a lot of A-frame, you're going to go with this syntax. Just know that it's the same result. Under the covers, that is this. But that is a lot friendlier. Um, I think the reason they do it is because the, uh, generally this is easier to change into something else if they have to change it later. Um, so uh, another thing to point out, a entity is the equivalent of a div. So if you need to move two things together, or you want to manipulate them together, you just wrap two objects in an entity, and then you say, uh, make this smaller, or move it over here, or animate it like so, and then they will move as one unit. So next thing, we might want to decide where we want to put this sphere, right? We're actually in 3D space, so we have to worry about this. So <clears throat> let's say that there is a small room that's five meters by five meters, and uh, we're standing right here at zero, 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 which is where you stand by default, and more specifically, by default, uh, if you do not declare a camera, which you can declare one and put it wherever you want, and that's where the viewer will start, it is at 0, 1.6 to 0, which is 1.6 meters off the ground, that's the 0, 0, 1. So x, y, z, y is up, uh, z is off to my right, and, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, z is uh, in front of me, and x is off to my right. Uh, another strange thing, you start by facing negative down the, X, the Z axis. So if you want something to be in front of you, you need to have it at negative five. If it's positive five, you're like, where the hell's my sphere? This is bullshit. Ah, all right. So, uh, word to the wise. <coughs> so positioning in 3D looks like this. So if we had a cube at a zero, two, two, so this is, uh, it didn't move anywhere on the X axis. It's up to on the Y axis and it's out. Uh, uh, negative two, so it's say on the z axis. And you notice that it's cut in half. That is because in uh, A-frame, at least, we are positioning things from the center point. So if I don't, if I don't accommodate for their width, it's going to be cut in half by my wall. Assuming there's a wall there, which generally there isn't a wall right in the middle of your face. Don't recommend. 
Um, and then, so here, on these two, I've accounted for their height. So each of these squares are one meter. So this one's a uh, half a meter off the ground. So it's actually laying directly flat on the ground. Um, and you notice that the rest of these do not have decimals. So these kind of, uh, you know, his center point's right in the middle of, of the, that cross section. And this guy here is in between uh, the vertical, but is flush between um, uh, the x-axis. Or whatever. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, he's raised up high enough to clear clear uh, three meters, and then uh, four and a half up, which means that it is, uh, which actually four and a half up should be one. I did that wrong. Should actually be touching the ceiling. <laughs> Sorry. I'll fix that. <coughs> so if we want to position our here. Um, that's what that might look like. So I, I, feel, I broke out the tag a little bit so it's easy to read, but it's going to work the same. Uh, so where do you think that's going to be? X, Y, Z, right? Yep, X, Y, Z. It's, it's going to be right here. Like right here. Ish. So it's uh, two meters down. It's three meters up, sorry. And four meters up. And I'm, I'm looking down negative on the z-axis because of reasons I have no idea. But you could, by default, rotate the camera if you didn't like looking down the z-axis by default. And you could go positive instead of negative. It's a thing you can do. <clears throat> Ugh. So let's say we want to animate our sphere. We want to make it a bouncy ball, yeah? So what's that look like? Um, animation tags and a frame by default are just inside of the sphere. So you can just, our sphere closed here and opens up there. And I'm just putting an animation tag, and I, much like CSS, but it looks more like SVG animation stuff, because that's XML. Um, I'm telling you, I want you to move your position. You're going to start at that point, and you're going to move to that point. And uh, word-wise, make sure that the starting position of the sphere and the beginning animation point are the same point. Otherwise, it'll start over here and go bleh, and then it'll go this way. Right? So, let's see this in action. Let's uh, stop looking at this uh, theoretically. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the finished version. Okay, that looks stupid. <laughs> right? This is terrible. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> All right, so that's basically what I had on the slide. I think there was a small error, but um, so let's say that we wanted to uh, no, not ng repeat. Oops, we wanted to keep this going forever. I think it's infinite actually. You would check the docs, and then you would know things. Or I could scroll down a little bit and cheat. Maybe. There we go. Uh, yes, repeat infinite. So I'll save that and go back. OK, looks pretty dumb still. We're getting there. Uh, one thing, you can actually go and inspect this. And I could actually go in. And you notice there's a canvas element. That's just a, a frame will make that. Um, you don't need to worry about that. But I could, for example, say, nah, you're three meters. Now he's three meters. Um, so another thing we can do is we can say, hey, don't start immediately. How about you wait a second? So uh, I could say, wait nearly one second. So just like in JavaScript, it's in milliseconds. So 1,000 is one. Let's refresh that. All right. All right. Kind of want to see a floor, though. It's not really bouncing on anything. Uh, okay, we're doing good on time. I'm going to cheat. I made a plane earlier, meaning a flat thing, not an arrow. Uh, here's my plane. So I could put him above or below. It doesn't really matter. 
Uh, the only time order of uh, markup matters, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, because I always do it to write out and then change it if I need to, is um, if you have a PNG as a texture, uh, if it has transparency, you can see through it if it's 3D info. But if there's another texture behind it, the transparency will cut off the texture. Does that make sense? So like if, if you had a square and this is uh, you know a circle, and then you had, and that, the circle was, was a, P, a, C, a PNG, right, where the, the corners are transparent. And then you had another one behind it, right, circle. Uh, <coughs> it would just cut it off like that. This image, you wouldn't be able to see that part. But if you change the order of the tags, even though you're not changing the 3D position, it'll render right. So, you're welcome. That headache avoided. Um, <coughs> okay, so on my plane, we just said color black. Keep it easy. Oops. There we go. Don't be slow. Uh, we're going to rotate it so it's laying down on the floor and not standing in front of a an obelisk. And then we're going to give it a width and height of 20. And uh, it'll be 000. zero, zero. Anyone want to guess where this is? So basically, it is right underneath me and goes, what is it? 10 meters in each direction, right? because it's positioning by the center point. And I'm 1.6 meters off the ground by default, which I did not change. So if we refresh that, and then I can drag actually, so people with a uh, keyboard and mouse can actually do something. It's not complete uh, boredom. There's my floor. Um, all right, all right. So. It doesn't look like a very convincing ball. Well, let's be honest. So there's easing. Let's do gravity the way it usually works. You ease in and you speed up as you fall. So easing in is like, okay. And then ease out is like, oh. Yeah? Huh. That kind of looks like a thing. Looks like 90s uh, 3D. That's not very good. Well, they have all sorts of equations here. We could bounce. That's, uh, bounce is a modifier on uh, ease in. So uh, basically, if you've ever seen the, the, this in, in, uh, in CSS, they have where you can make the graph of, of how it goes. So uh, a, an animation by default, let's say this is on a graph, yeah. This is the starting point, and we're manipulating point of data. It could be position, it could be transparency, it could be whatever. Um, usually you just go uh, direct line, point A to point B, right? Beginning, end of animation. But if you're easing in, you go slow, and then you pick up speed, ease out, you go like this, and then bounce is a modifier on that, where at, uh, as either the beginning or the end, it's going to do a bounce. So let's see what this looks like. That's not how bouncing works. <laughs> because it's bouncing at the beginning. It's easing in, so it's going to bounce then. So what we need to do is make a simple adjustment here. And this is how scientific I am when I'm making this stuff. I try until it works. <laughs> so there you go. And another little thing I like to do so um, it's going to 1.5. 1.5 is the exact radius. Um, objects, when they bounce, they don't generally uh, just meet perfectly, like on the atom. Uh, they usually deform a little bit. Uh, in this case, I can cheat a little bit and say, oops, you're going to go through the floor a little bit, and it'll kind of look like it's flattening on the bottom. Oh, wait. Nope, I did that wrong. I went lower, not higher. Let's say, uh, let's go a little lower, a little exaggerated. More exaggerated. Yeah, kind of deforms at the bottom. So this is like a flat beach ball kind of thing. So, yeah, we got a bouncy ball, pretty cool. If uh, the way it works, if this was uh, on your phone, I could click this and I would get two eyeballs. I think it won't let me do it. Nope, won't let me do it. Um, but it actually just renders two images side by side, and then you just slam your phone in one of these guys or something, and it just works. 
Um, you can also disable uh, keyboard movement and all that stuff. Uh, you can enable game pads and it's all kind of plugins. Uh, the very robust system they've made. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Uh, so, uh, we got a little more time left. Any questions? I, I'll show you how this is done. Yeah. I was wondering if you ever use the iPhone Spectre to get a handle on position and stuff. What is it? It's an option. If you uh, want to work in. Oh, the inspector. You, yeah, you can actually. Uh, let's see something in a free space, you can produce an uh, entity and then copy out HTML. That one? Yep. Yeah. I haven't yet. Uh, I haven't touched this stuff since uh, DrupalCon LA when we made these headsets. Uh, and I, I, made a, I made an experience. But yeah, I haven't used these headsets. It's really cool. It's really good to get your head around the minus and minus yeah. position. And stuff. I imagine, yeah, because you can, you can click. I, I keep forgetting to show this to people when I do this. But yeah, so I can just be like, oh yeah, you're going to go this way or that way. Yeah. Um, I don't quite understand. I, like, uh, I, I assume this is a camera and these things mean something. I don't quite understand all that yet. But this is freaking awesome. Ships with A frame by default. I wonder if they could rip it out if it would be smaller than a meg. But, eh. Yeah, right. But it's so pretty. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I have not got a chance to use it. It looks amazing. I'm so impressed uh, that they did that. Uh, okay. So. Uh, real quick about making images for VR. So um, every image uh, to scale well needs to have a um, dimensions that are a factor of what four? It's like four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, blah, 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 blah. all that's twenty, forty-eight. Yeah. Um, the the this is this is an image that'll be used for a sky image. It's going to be wrapped around a sphere. If you looked at this in in your goggles, all of those squares would be about a meter. So this is how it deforms as it goes out in space. And then these guys are basically, if you made this a room, each one of these could be the corner of a room. So if you kind of think of it like that. And so let me turn on. So here's one I made. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. <coughs> I'm going to cheat. Cheat. <coughs> cheat faster. Uh, Adjustment layer. Kiro adjustment layer. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's here somewhere. Oh, here you are. Okay. That will compress the. Hopefully, you can see that a little better. Okay, good enough. So, this is one I made. Um, so the way I ended up making this, uh, if you can notice, there's a lot of stars at the bottom, and the closer you get up the top, they just go away. Because I found when I was trying to make stars up there, it would just all like, <laughs> just like crash into each other. Um, and then I just put a free cloud right at the top, like that. Ah, it's fine. Um, then I also I hand painted the, the mountains. Uh, very artistic. Yeah. I just used the polygon lasso, uh, but I made them in the smart object of Photoshop because I didn't know how to predict the deformity. Yeah, because uh, at one point the mountains felt like they were leaning over you. Not a very good experience, unless you want to be weird and scary. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically thinking of how light came across the sky, uh, if that's the sun over there, then it's going to get dark the further away it is from that point. Um, and yeah, just kind of messing around back and forth, figuring it out. Uh, it looks like you were in the middle of a green meadow, and there's a spotlight about yay big, even though it picks up like a quarter of a third inch. And I got one more for you. Uh, yeah, so here's another one. Uh, we call it Sky Island. Uh, it was a, we were coming up with a bunch of weird ideas of what to put in that thing. We ended up doing another piece. Uh, at Sky Island, uh, yeah, again, just painting something, taking a guess at where it should be and how it should be deformed, putting it in a smart object so I didn't destroy the original, if you know what that is. Um, but basically, just placing a link to it in there so that the when I, when I stretch it, it doesn't have to stretch the original. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of uh, trying to make it feel like there's uh, islands in the sky. Um, so, yeah, very amusing. Um, if you want to see the work we did, 
This is, so I spent 30 hours of my life before the A-frame inspector making a 3D image map. Boo. Uh, so there's a bunch of planes in here that uh, are about the size of a face, and if you hover over them, there's a little bit of JavaScript that makes another uh, plane appear uh, over that person's head, which I also had to position. Uh, and then here's my favorite Easter egg. If you had the headset and clicked at this moment, I'll just click my mouse, deal with it, glasses. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, founding father. <laughs> um, yeah. And then somebody stretched mine. Jerks, the text is all wrong, but whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, that was fun. Uh, this was taken with a 360 camera. We uh, did not do a photosphere, but we could have done that. It's just we just would have been holding our holding that for longer, which would have been awkward. But uh, 360 camera it basically looks like it's a thin stick with like two globes on either side. and take fish eyes and then stitch it stitch it all together. Um, and then 360 cameras are usually like these weird looking cubes with cameras coming out in weird places. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's pretty much all I got. Um, so yeah. Any more questions? I'm not sure. So there are, like, if you're talking computer computer technology, uh, Nvidia and uh, Radeon both made a very strong attempt of getting getting VR sound. And like, I think Nvidia was even like, oh, but your ears are far apart. We need to accommodate for if it's coming from behind you, it has to go through flesh. And blah, blah, blah. Um, and bounces off objects, so that is a thing. I don't know if it's a thing in WebVR. There's some basic implementation of it, um, I assume. And actually, I haven't really messed with it at all. So, sorry. <laughs> no, no, just get game. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's for for asking so many questions. Do you want one for asking another question? All right. Who else has a question? Ah, I'll bribe you. Um, have, you got, have you used this for anything kind of actual website meeting? We're working on something. I can't talk about it yet. Oh. But here, anyway. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you know, you are damn. So that is one thing I can talk about. So we did actually a backdrop site because uh, at the time it was further along than eight and uh, easier to use. So, uh, oh, here you go. So yeah, basically you can upload your 360 image. Um, and uh, on the eight frame site, it's very easy. Very easy. I just, you know, backdrop matjs, eight frame crap, and then a scene, a sky, and then you cram in the URL from the CMS that just worked. So. Yeah, that was extremely easy. I don't know what else you would do. Like, you could make a field that had X, Y, Z position data and try to tell the user in the form how it's positioned, but like, why and what, I don't know. Another thing you could do, uh, oops. So that night scene one I showed you, um, there's a pixel painted moon. <laughs> Um, and here is was going to be a lullabot spaceship, so he's coming down. He's gonna have a rocket on the bottom and like hover, and you would be able to go inside the head and like see all the cool things we do or something. Not that. Um, <clears throat> but I got this far. So this is an ODE file, uh, which is something that uh, uh, what, what's the free one? A lot of I don't remember the name. Free uh, open source uh, 3D Blender. Blender popped out for us. Uh, we originally made it do 3D printing. And then we ended up doing it, uh, using it uh, for this. And we had to take out a lot of polygons so the phone didn't burn up in the friggin' thing. Um, and yeah, uh, another thing we've learned, the less light sources and the less polygons, the less likely the phone turn, like goes into flames. So um, know your audience, know your tech kind of stuff. Test it out. Time. All right. Go on. Uh, how do you watch The vibe. Uh, I can't really. Thank you for um, uh, They're working on it. They're getting better at media. They're not very good at it. Um, yeah. And, and, but they have made an A-frame painter implementation. 
Um, so you know the, uh, the Google Kill Brush? They made that name for They are actually able to get all the, all the tracking data over there. I imagine that your phone was for her. No, actually you can't do it. <laughs> but yeah, I imagine that might be a little bit heavier load than in the application, but uh, sorry, I, I, I meant to give that to her. I hope you weren't expecting one. You can have this one with coffee all over it. But, uh. All right, any other questions? Sure, I haven't tried. Probably. Uh, there's a big plugin, um, open source plugin repository for A-Frame, where you just include a JavaScript file and then you use their their tag, a whatever, a reflective surface or something, and then it just works. Hopefully. Uh, probably. Uh, you don't know until you try. <laughs> but it doesn't really. Okay. I've never actually had one go with wins, but. I think I'm going to get kicked out soon, so thank you.